Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, 
And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts and all that we say and do be always acceptable to you, O Lord our God. Amen. As we know, there are times when the Bible Holy Scripture seems to run on and on and on to make a single point. But this week's Gospel for Mark is not one of those times. It's rapid fire, it's brief, and right to the point. It's like from six, zero to 60 in just one line. And we have heard in that Gospel, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Every phrase, every word packs a powerful message. Get ready. The Christ has come. He calls us to eternal life. And in all of this, the operative word is repent for this first Sunday in Lent. Repent is the word that we're to focus on. But repent here does not mean the breast beating that we think of often and being sorry and regretting. It literally means to rethink. To put some quiet time aside. To stop. To interrupt our routines. Reassess adjust our priorities and our behavior. Jesus understands our nature. He understands the feelings that we go through and have all the time. He knows we're a bundle of reflexes and instincts. He knows that we constantly need to reorder our lives to bring them in line with his plan for us. He knows we must constantly repent to get ourselves right with God. That is why we have Lent. As we begin this season of repentance, we're reminded that our forgiveness is conditional. It depends on our capacity. It depends on our willingness to forgive, to purge ourselves of grudges, resentments, hatreds, those Poisons that destroy families and friendships and communities and nations. An older man recently said to me, he said, he forgets everything but grudges. Unfortunately, this is a condition, a condition that's not limited to only of those who are getting old and forgetful, dealing with memory loss. How many slights, how many rejections, how many snubs are still in our minds? How many wounds and heartbreaks that we carry around with us? How many of those we carry around waiting for payback time, waiting for revenge? That's such a burden to carry. It's such a waste of time, a waste of energy. For hate harms the hated one, but it destroys the hater. Failure to forgive makes us slaves to the past and blind to the future. Many of us probably feel like we've been going through Lent during our experiences during the pandemic. This is the first time I've been to church, actually into church, in a year. 
I've been doing it online. My wife and I. In the first part of that time of the pandemic, we cleaned every closet out and straightened every closet in our house. You wouldn't find a cleaner one. I can't say that today. These are some of the first things we did. Reorganize, clean, get rid of stuff, get rid of things. That's how you jumpstart Lent. We have to clean out. We have to clean out our spiritual attics, our spiritual basements. We have to dump the trunk junk around that's there that's been piling up, reminding us of the past slights, reminding us of those rejections that we've experienced, festering humiliations that have still haunted us. We must let in fresh air and the sunlight of God's grace during this time. We must forgive. Then see what a difference that makes. To be refreshed and renewed in confidence and conviction as we await the coming of the risen Christ. From the time of Abraham, the chosen people had also waited for the Christ for the Messiah, the kingdom of God. They weren't quite sure what that meant, but they knew that God had something big in store for them. And then Jesus comes along and tells them their time of waiting is over. Their time of waiting is at end. For he is the Messiah, the promised one of God. And clearly, he is not what they expected. And thank goodness God knew better. The kingdom he promised was not a triumphant warrior kingdom. It was not a feudal system where one neighbor gets it to lord over other neighbors. It is a kingdom of love. A kingdom of love. A family where all have equal access to our loving God and we all share the responsibility of loving each other. For in Christ, the kingdom is near. For in Christ, we have Emmanuel, God, with us. Not just when he walked the earth, but as he promised, with us to the ending of the world. In Christ is not a remote thing, not unapproachable. He's unmistakably present in our lives. He is here. The mystery of the Trinity also begins to take shape in these first brief lines from Mark and later in Acts, as you'll see during the season of Lent. The Spirit will come into the picture more vividly. But here we're only briefly introduced to the Spirit, urging Jesus into the desert where he's confronted by solitude. He's confronted by isolation, sacrifice, and temptation for 40 days. All of which brings us back to the jump start of Lent. These, these are precious days. We should not waste them. Repent, repent, get rid of, eliminate hatred, rejoice in the relief, rejoice in the comfort, rejoice in the satisfaction that that brings. For the next 40 days, may we live his kingdom, share his love, spread his good news, it is Lent, and Jesus is near. May we all be ready to meet him. Amen.
We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through his prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We will also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to you your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Christ peace. Christ peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen The gifts for God, for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Gotcha. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of 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 Christ, the bread of heaven. Of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body 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 of heaven, the of Christ, the bread. of heaven, the body of Christ, the the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The 
sat down. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
let us go forth in the name of Christ.